me take a breath. Let me take a breath. Ah, I actually have bow-related stuff to um, talk about. First, I just want to explain why I'm not making, actually, you know, sitting down and doing, like, bow-related video. It's, I'm the prime mover. I'm the manager of a, of a facility, like a, a national park superintendent or a state park superintendent, but on a smaller scale. It's a relatively small, about 30-something acres with a trail system, structures, public beach, nature center. And this is crunch time. The spring is a crunch time. I have to stay highly caffeinated. I have to stay moving my trail mix because no matter how much I do, I'm behind. It's also a natural consequence because I do have employees that are slowly, not a huge number, um, three, almost full-time with a very part-time technical assistant, computer-wise. It's also one of those times where I have my group of people, one hasn't even started yet, I sign them something, and if they're having a difficult time with it or whatever, then snatch it and give it to somebody else. And so I'm dealing with personalities too, where they take it personally if I pull a project out of their hands, but you know it's like that whole thing. Um, run faster, get out of the way, or get run over. It would be nice if everyone had served a little time in the military so they kind of understand that, that you have a job to do, and if it doesn't get done, you give it to somebody else. It has nothing to do with personalities or how much you respect the person. It's just that this thing has to get done. Okay, so my little spiel. I'll save my, my breakfast until I'm done with this. It's kiln drying or, or, or speed drying wood. Now, a lot of you like to go out and actually gather your own staves, or you don't have, let's face it, you know, you don't have... 120 bucks or $100 burning a hole in your pocket to buy a single Osage stave, especially if you're, you're big ending. You know, it's a, that is a big investment. It's a big investment for me because I'm not Mr. Moneybags. And so a good alternative is to go out and gather your own stuff. Not a lot of it is prime bowwood. Granted that, you know, service barrier, hop horn beam or anything are good bowwoods if you dry them to the correct moisture level. And like me, you gather, oh, I've got this sugar maple stave, and I don't want to wait, you know, a year before I can use it. And so a good thing to do, like a Native American style approach, would be to gather it green, work it green, and then speed dry it. And there's ways to speed that up. It's just a natural consequence that if you take a tree and you chop it down, you throw it in your pole barn hole, you've got a giant pole barn. You can handle a whole tree. It would take years for that to get down to approximately 9% moisture. If you cut it into sections, say a six foot section of that tree, throw it in your pole barn, it's going to take less time. Every time you work that down, and this isn't brain science or rocket surgery, every time you work it down to a smaller piece of wood, it'll dry faster. And so a handy tactic, and I wouldn't do this necessarily with the elms because they twist, throwing this out there. You cut your log, you round, take a saw, and just work it lengthwise down to the center. So when it dries, it's not going to split or check as much, and it's also going to control that drying, so it's not going to get a ma massive propeller twist. Okay. I set it. I don't take it back. So let's see here. Have I mentioned before in previous videos and in my book about speed drying in a car? Throw it in your car, crack a window, park it in the sun for a while. After you let it dry, your worked down bow, do it with a worked down bow, not a pie shaped stave, but a worked down bow because they're a little more stable, even if you lash it to a board so if it dries, it'll stay stable. It'll, it'll dry relatively quick in your car, speed drying. Now, what if you don't have a car that you can just like park in the sunshine, use for a kiln? A solar kiln. Is it possible to go to Habitat for Humanity store or some other resale shop and buy old windows? If they have architectural um, salvage, you can buy a window. It doesn't need to be double or triple pane, just a piece of glass. What about a large picture frame? Piece of glass. Take two of them together. 
And you've got the making for a solar kiln, aha. Uh -huh. And you picture the average size of a kiln for a bow stave, it's small. You have a thing that's about this big around at the maximum. And you know, exactly this long. It does not take a huge, a huge portion of real estate to build a small solar kiln. How do you do it? You have like paint the floor black, maybe some old um, particle board, piece of plywood, rocks, whatever, you know, paint them black and then just using scrap lumber or what have you, um, that glass, maybe some plastic or whatever, build a little solar kiln, find a sunny spot. It could even be portable so you can move it around chasing the sunlight. Now there's two aspects to solar kilns. One is developing the heat, the warmth, the, the moisture, you know, to help bake it. But you have to have air moving. Vent it. And I suppose, I bet you, dollars to donuts, you can either have like a convection type of thing where you've got an opening down here and an opening up here and then warm air kind of rises, you know, and it keeps it pumping. Or else, how about going, are there radio shacks anymore? Or else go online and buy like a little fan. It doesn't need to be huge air movement. Keep in mind the volume of your solar bow kiln is going to be small. And solar goes along with photovoltaic cells. Uh -huh. Wouldn't that be tricky to have one or two little little fans that are powered by solar. So when the sun is pumping heat down on your bow, you've got your little fans going. So my friends in the bow world, my fellow adventurers into the technical aspects of making springy wood that throws sharp little pointy arrow shafts through the woods, through the arrow, through the air. How about one or two or every single one of you, you know, say that today is a good day to build a solar kiln to dry bow staves. I can easily get the material. It's not going to set me back. In fact, part of the fun is scavenging, going around into the deep recesses of your basements and your pole barns and your garages and blah ha ha. I found a piece of glass or I found some clear plastic. I found sticks or plywood or one by ones or two by fours or pieces of metal or PVC pipe. Let's do some research into the possibility of building solar kilns to dry our bowl wood faster. Sounds like a good project. And now with that, I'm done. Signing off, JR from the woods, about to go on to my next investment in time management. I've got to load stuff on flash drives for somebody that's going to swoop in here, like the archangel of newsletter making and hopefully we can piece this baby together our newsletter summer schedule before um my boss my fearless leader says john i need to have your newsletter so we can run it off the printer but first i've got about 50 other things to do including replacing a broken board on the deck that is alongside the pond oh well it's good to have too many things to do than not enough that's my philosophical interpretation of life.